all right so now we in this part of the lesson where we're talking about denied supplies so denied supplies basically means that uh, there will be no input vat claimed no input vat claimed and no output vat levied why it's not a supply is defined quite a examples of denied supplies uh, there are three which stand out uh, the first one we think about is acquisition of a model's vehicle and social club subscription and entertainment ladies and gents anything in life that you enjoy is entertainment Therefore, it will be a denied supply. Right. So these are basically the main three categories which are very well known in practice. Acquisition of a motor vehicle would be a denied supply. However, if you buy a motor vehicle from a car dealership, a car dealership would likely be a registered vendor it'd be a vet vendor therefore it'd be charging out for vet because he's a car dealership that's his service that's his business in that instance this guy is allowed to charge out for vet so when you buy a car from a car dealership you would you would be paying output vet over and above the amount that you are paying for the car because a car dealership charges output vet however because acquisition of a motor vehicle is a denied supply you will not be able to claim back the input vet in that situation so there would be no input for you to claim back as a buyer There'd be no input. The only way you would have been able to claim back this input, this output vet, which was levied onto you, is if you yourself were also a car dealership. It's crazy, isn't it? So you'd have to be a car dealership for you to actually qualify to claim input vet, whereas you bought a motor vehicle. Right, so that also reminds me about a situation where you would have claimed uh, uh, input VAT where there was no VAT claimed. The only such situation that could give rise to such would be second-hand goods where the actual person that sold you the actual item was not a registered VAT vendor whereas you on the one hand you were a registered vet vendor then in that instance you can claim more than what you were actually charged because you would claim notional input vet or or a deemed, deemed input vet that would be the only reason that gives rise to a situation of you claiming more than what you were actually levied all right but that's not in the same breath as this conversation so we are pretty clear with a motor vehicle at this stage so social club subscriptions you would not be able to claim input vet why it's not a supply as defined why it's because it's a denied supply 
However, something like a cycle membership, you know, your legal practitioner membership, your medical practitioner membership, and so forth and so forth, you can claim input VAT on those subscriptions because they are not social club sub subscriptions. So if you are as a holder of a sports subscription, uh, whereas you are a sports subscription, you're paying a member fee uh, to a golf club that you belong to, you would not be able to claim back uh, VAT on that because why? It's a denied supply because it falls within the the social club subscriptions even if you were to go on and say that uh, but however you conduct your business on the golf course with some of your friends that happen to be potential partners and so you can actually claim that in that instance no that would be an income tax argument which would not be appropriate for a VAT argument. So in that instance, there would not be any VAT consequences that arise because it is a denied supply as defined. As we lastly spoke about the last part here, which is entertainment, as I also elaborated as well, anything in life that you do enjoy is said to be denied because it's in the form of an entertainment which basically makes it a denied supply. Therefore, no input VAT can be claimed and therefore it's a denied supply. Right. However, there are certain exceptions that can happen. So, certain exceptions that can happen and they can change the outlook of the picture of something being a denied supply. That would be the only one way where something would override the exception of a denied supply now being a taxable supply. So denied supply exceptions. The first one would be for someone who's in the entertainment industry. Someone who's in the entertainment industry. Okay. What must arise in that situation is that this vendor must be able to have to cover indirect and direct costs. That is the first uh, indirect and direct cost. You must cover those. So when you look at the statement of uh, comprehensive income, if you see that this guy is making a profit, that goes to say that he was able to cover his costs, right? The second part is that he must, the actual products that he has must be equal to, must be equal to open market value what are we saying we are saying if this guy is in the fish and chips industry and he sells his fish in that case a baby hake and his baby hake costs 80 rands and the open market value is 100 rands then you would not qualify because his baby egg is not equal in terms of the price it's not equal to the open market value then you would not qualify for the exception it's an end test however if his baby egg was 100 rands and the open market value is 100 rands as well then the exception would kick in and therefore if this exception kicks in therefore this gentleman can now be he can now be a taxable supply. And if he's a taxable supply from being a denied supply, that means he can start charging VAT, whether VAT input or output, depending on the direction of transacting. Right? However, if this guy is also in the fish and chips industry something fishy 
we'll call it that. And there happen to be bona fide promotions within the business. Bona fide promotions. What do we mean by bona fide? Bona fide promotions would mean to the uh, in relation to a fish and chips business is that whatever promotions that you make, it must be in relation to what you would usually have in terms of him making that merchandise available to customers. So it must be it must be something like fish, since he's in the fish and chips industry, or chips or rations, Viennas, and so forth and so forth. However, if he has bona fide promotions that are not in relation to his business, like something like uh, dolls that would give out when somebody buys fish and chips and he gives them a doll, for instance, then that would not be similar to how he normally conducts his business and therefore that would mean that he is not within the actual realm of actually qualifying because the exception does not, does not kick in. However, if the bona fide promotion is actually uh, in, in harmony with what he normally transacts in, in this case it's fish or chips or something in relation to that, then the item which is a bona fide promotion would now suddenly also be a taxable supply. Because you'd also have to agree in saying that if this guy on every Tuesday, let's say he has a special of you buy a baby head, you're gonna get uh, fish fingers with a baby head every Tuesday for a price of 120. You know, let's say a baby head is normally 80 rands. Let's go on to a baby hick. So you buy a baby hick and on a normal basis for 80 rands, but now come Tuesday within a particular week, there's a special which runs out through the month. Like every Tuesday, people get a baby hick. Over and above that, they get, uh, they get fish fingers, which are normally costing people 40 bucks for free with the baby hack, right? So that is compatible to how he normally conducts his business. So in that situation, we're, what are we saying? We're saying because this guy, for starters, first of all, was able to cover his indirect cost because he's making a profit, he's met the first part of the requirement to, to even to be accept, uh, meeting the exception. The second part is that his charge is now, uh, like, you know, uh, it's now equal to the open market value. And open market value in this elaboration, I'll call it 80 rands once again, just to not confuse you. So we'll call it 80 rands. So the open market value is 80 rands, also sells his baby hake for 80 rands. So in this instance, that would mean that he qualifies for the exception because he's met the indirect cost. He was able to prove that he's making a profit and he's also charging uh, his prices based on open market value because 80 rands is what the open market value is as per the open market value available. So now if he's met that principle or those two principles, that means he can now be a VAT vendor and he can start charging VAT uh, because now that supply that happened to be in the entertainment industry, which was a denied supply because food is something that we enjoy, which it which would have been a denied supply. Now it suddenly changes to a taxable supply because this person is in the entertainment industry because he makes provision of having to transact within the entertainment industry. In this case, he is a vendor within the space of being an owner of a fish and chips company. Right. So, that, so at that point now, he can be a vet vendor. And you can start charging taxable uh, output VAT or input VAT based on the level of transaction. Another situation that gives rise to is that he gives fish fingers as a special option that happens every Tuesday together with the baby hake. So now 
they are normally paying 80 rands for a baby hake but on and the fish fingers actually cost 40 rands so every tuesday people know that they get fish fingers for free for the same price of 80 rands so sars is also now saying if the baby hake is also in uh, supplied with a promotion that is a bona fide promotion in this instance it's fish fingers that promotion can also be deemed to be a taxable supply where you can also charge out uh, input vet on that taxable supply or output vet as well because it's in the entertainment industry even though the fish fingers have a zero cost because he's giving that out for free right but if he was giving out a doll with his baby hake, that doll would be an issue because it's not in harmony with what he'd normally supply in terms of him having a fish and chips uh, company. So in that instance, the doll would not attract uh, the exception of it being made a taxable supply. So that's what we must be very wary of when we are dealing with... Uh, entertainment industry so whoever is in the entertainment industry uh, uh, pertaining to the situation as to whether they fulfill these requirements they can be taxable supplies right including the bona fide promotion okay so another situation where you can also claim uh, for denied supplies is if you get an office holder office holder or a consultant or an employee who spends more than one night away from his place of residence and he books into a, a hotel and he gets food beverages and he's away from work to do work for his company what are we saying we're saying if somebody is away from his usual place of home where he resides and is going on work uh, on work calls where he's going to attend a work seminar or he's going to to conduct business on behalf of the business or work uh, company that he works for and he's away from home and he books into a hotel for a thousand rands and he gets a meal he also gets to watch tv and get beverages and so forth and they charge him one thousand rands for being away from work in that instance he becomes a taxable supply therefore you can claim that you can claim that even though the hotel is like a form of entertainment because it's a something that we enjoy food beverages tv and so forth they would normally be denied supplies in this instance because he is not in the industry of having to be in the entertainment industry but he's in the industry of going away from work to go work to go conduct work business wherever he's going and he happens to book into a hotel for more than one night in that case he is more than welcome to claim a vet so therefore he changes from being a denied supply to now suddenly being a taxable supply. That is an exception that SARS also gives us a leeway in, basically. Right, so there's a very fine line within that.
it doesn't really matter if the situation is somebody is now you know consuming entertainment and therefore you'd not be liable to claim that in that instance the company will be able to claim that because the person is away <laughs> on the work basis going to fulfill work duties the same could be applied to an office holder and consultant or an employee it just so happens what the actual situation is so the also situation where a ship vessel has people that are doing work within the ship and are given food as a result in that instance they can also claim that because people on the ship have to eat as well however food in that regards becomes uh, are claimable and if we have uh, somebody who's in the entertainment industry and they're basically giving us a service to let's say we have a person who's in the entertainment industry in this instance they come over and they are coming to perform for us it's a music concert going on uh, at our premises these people can claim that because they are running an entertainment industry they are in the entertainment industry in that situation they can claim that and they can also levy that output because they are in the entertainment industry whereas for us who are receiving the service we cannot claim that back because we are not in the entertainment industry uh, the only company that's doing the supplying of such a service they are the ones who are in a position to claim uh, the actual the actual vet so if we also get varying situations that can give rise to denied supplies also being uh, turned around so if we have a price for bets uh, which is a price for bet for instance that can also be turned into a, a taxable supply say that we've got a cake that would normally be a denied supply because it's something that we enjoy and this cake is basically used uh, well let's rather not use a cake but let's use a bottle of champagne which is something that we enjoy because we like having a glass of champagne from time to time and this bottle of champagne gets to be used for price for bets normally a bottle of champagne would be a denied supply because it's something that we use so we'd not be able to claim that on it however if we use this bottle of champagne as a price for bets we have a competition that's running and on this bottle of champagne we put a sticker of our company and the promotion that we're running for our company it's a marathon safe uh, for, for, for argument stake and we state the name of the race on the sticker and we actually have like you know uh, a pair of shoes that we also giving with this uh, with this uh, thing with this uh, bottle of champagne so in that instance as per usual the bottle of champagne would be a denied supply your running shoes would be a denied